We all agreed very early on on The Crown that you can deliver a film to a different medium. Yeah, it is TV, but we wanted to do something that is more movie-like. There's always this single source philosophy. My job is to serve the story and to serve the director's vision. Of course the show needs to evolve. You don't want to shoot season six the same way you shot season one. I mean, that was the 1950s, now we're on the 2000s. The show grammar needs to evolve with the period. So for instance, when we moved to a new cast on seasons three and four, we changed the rule. So now the close-ups should be done on 65s and maybe 75s to be more flattering or to be a little bit more observational. Since season four, we've been moving a little bit more away from the actors and lensing up a little bit more. The use of zooms that was like somehow forbidden for you know the early seasons. I think now we're embracing a little bit of that, you know, especially with all this paparazzi stuff that we're doing now on season six. So it makes sense that we also become a little bit more active and more chaotic in a sense, more observational. The way of lighting the crown, I suppose, is putting big lights through the big windows, and then that creates this sort of soft light that's all coming from one direction. We did find some reference like archive photographs of what the lighting setup was for that first televised speech. And they were in a room like this, but they had like lights and obviously cameras, but they had like scaffolding rigs up to make, you know, to give her backlights and quite fun to recreate that and actually have lights in vision. Yeah, the crown lighting, I would say naturalistic, a high quality to it as well. I want to believe that the space looks real, that the light sources are believable and realistic. So the daylight comes through the windows and I rely very heavily on my practicals on set. I don't like seeing big sources or big chandeliers like that off. So even for daytime scenes, for instance, I usually have them at like 20%, 30%. So they're just alive. It's supposed to look rich and occupied in a sense. So every single room, they have the practicals on. Practicals have been a real thing on the crown, right? How much we use them. A lot of the palaces, they stay the same throughout. And so in a way that like, the lighting doesn't change because the set doesn't. So it's still big lights through big windows, you know, through net curtains. But then what does change is almost like the world outside of that started in the 50s and then almost up to date into the, at least into the noughties. You know, now we're in the 80s, it feels there might be more neon or something. And sort of playing with that to contrast with the lighting in the palaces, which never changes, is, is always quite fun. Seasons one and two, I'd say, we're pretty much still working conventional with tungsten and HMI sources. Now, on season six, I'd say they're probably 80% LED and 20% conventional. Well, initially, for seasons one and two, we had the HMIs aiming directly to the windows. The seasons five and six, we changed a little bit. So now the HMIs bounce, so it's more like skylight coming back into the house than sunlight. It's a specific quality to the way the light bounces on the poly that is just cleaner. It's about having conversations with the art department and like set decorators, because that sometimes gives you a bit of extra motivation within the room. I always wanted to be able to deliver something that was sophisticated, but not on the face. So that's why I always felt that the, the backlights without motivation. So where's that light coming from? This is a constant question I keep asking myself. Do I believe this? Because sometimes you might be in a room and the windows are at one end, but the scene is taking place at the other end. That daylight can't be motivated all the way to the back of the room. We can't really use that as much. You know, yeah, if there's a practical there and I want to give this person here a warm backlight that matches that color, well, maybe that's okay. But I, do I believe it? It's been my my kind of mantra since I started. Do I believe this to be real? There's four rooms on the same sort of row. So that's the queen's bedroom, 
This is her dressing room. The next one is Philip's dressing room. And the last one is his bedroom. And we have played, I mean, many, many scenes where we actually use the depth. This room has changed color throughout the seasons. Not only us have to think about modernizing the show in terms of like changing lenses, it's also the design changing a little bit. Although you want to stay classic, some stuff have to be refreshed. You go to those unbelievable sets, costume designers like Michelle and now Amy Roberts. It's just so, so rich that it felt to me that I should go somehow to the opposite direction, trying to make it very simple and soft and beautiful. Softness is very much related to the size of your source or the proximity between your target and the diffusion. You can have your source far away, but then you have to bring the diffusion really close. The other thing is if you enlarge the diffusion on a side source, you can naturally wrap it more. So it's very frequent now that my key light is actually the backlight. Sunny day exterior, for instance, just bounce something back. So now your softness comes from a massive bounce that is basically bouncing a single source. That's the sun. My goal is always to be able to offer a free set so they can come first and rehearse freely. So there's no stands, there's no flags or heads on the set when they first come. And it's funny how they usually ask, well, is this it? I mean, are you lit? Well, I am lit for wide shots. The tighter we get, there's probably another source that comes just for, you know, just to wrap the face a little bit more. It's all about being able to control you know, your light sources. So there's a lot of freedom for the directors and DOPs to do whatever they consider is appropriate for that episode. It's been one of my jobs throughout six seasons to welcome new directors and, and new DOPs, have a quick chat, show them a few scenes and say, well, this is what we've been doing. The famous room where the Queen faces the Prime Ministers. I mean, we've been there on every single season. And that's, I think, is a place that we'll all agree, it's not a place to be inventive. This is a place about formality. I think we, as filmmakers, we want to be as formal as the, the scene we're playing. The secret for a busy day is to have a very efficient morning. If you start slow, then you're going to be very anxious at the end of the day. When you go to locations, like the, the cathedrals, you know you're gonna have very busy days. You have 400 extras, sometimes the whole cast, and you have to cover all those faces. So the Crown shoots two main units, so there's actually, we need double of everything. So that's, you know, a lot of equipment that's needed. So you needed somebody like of the scale of Panelux to really support that, so we were never short of you know, the lights that we needed. So there's always someone rigging a crane for the next setup or rigging a steady cam. They always find a solution for even a last minute call. It's very responsive, very friendly. It's very easy to work with Panavision. It's a massive company, so they can provide almost everything. So we're always trying to be one step ahead and be ready for whatever comes next.